after knight takes d4, you know, we're staring at bishop c6 check, like if we play queen, oh, I'm sorry, it's, we can't even do that. See, that's another reason, but, you know, behind bishop b2 is that the d-pawn is guarded, so we couldn't even do that. But even if we could, you know, there'd be like a bishop c6 check might be annoying, you know, uh, but we can't, so, um, so never mind that, that idea. So castles is the standard, as a standard move, you know, we've played all the normal moves, rook b8, b5 castles, and White's normal move here is rook a to d1, you know, this is really the rook he wants to put on d1 lots of times, but, but doesn't because in the other lines he's trying to play very rapidly, so, you know, he didn't have time to develop his bishop. Um, and now, if we go to the, to the database, we see that, um, in this position, 10 out of 12 games, and, and it's been the the definitely the choice of Kopian, Sveshnikov, Ivanov. They've played this move 90. Okay, Ivanov played uh, rook b6, but 97 has been the normal move. And the idea behind 97 is just anticipating e4 and d5. And his idea is to play the knight to here to challenge, you know, the knight on e5. And just basically just get out of it where this is not a threat, you know, and he's covering the square a bunch of different ways. So after e4, knight g6, you know, if you were to try a move like d5 here, well, black is just doing really well in this position. I mean, if we look in, at the, you know, unlike the other position we had where a pawn came to d5 like this, our pawns have already gotten mobilized, you know, we don't have this issue of immobilized, you know, sort of stalemate pawns, you know, these pawns are all doing very well. And we can see that's minus 1.6 um, for black in this position, you know, after something like uh, you know, rook fe1, queen d6, he, he doesn't even have sufficient, you know, because of our knight on g6, he can't even play a move like bishop e5, and, you know, we can just play rook fe8, and uh, black is just up a pawn and actually has the better position, I think, um, due to these, you know, the shattered pawn is not irrelevant, you know, um, but I think there's also, a, you know, I think this position's fine, um, but white has this interesting idea of playing h4, and, um, after bishop b7, rook f e1, queen e7, um, we're following a game. Uh, this is not, I don't think this is Rashkovsky Petrosian. My chess base sometimes prints the wrong games. I think this is a Kozol game. No, it's Novikov against um, Alexandra Kostiniuk. Uh, and Kostiniuk won this game. And, um, you know, played just very to the point. Um, e5, d5. Once, I mean, what does is, what is White do here if he doesn't? If he takes, you know, this is just terrible, you know, black just plays knight takes, and, uh, but after d5, you know, it's clear that, that black has his fair share of space, you know, this was a big concession, you know, now black has good control over these, these squares, and, um, here, you know, they wound up trading pawns. This is a really complicated position, obviously, um, because white's trying to mate black, uh, black well. Black's trying to queen a pawn, but here it's clear that the mating attack has failed, and, and now it's just, uh, you know, the power of the C pawn. And, and as we go on, we can see that this is not, not what white wants out of this variation. And um, Though still, this with opposite bishops, I mean, this required a lot of technique, you know, to be able to win this position against a grandmaster. Well, I don't know if Novikov was a grandmaster yet, I get, you know, with this 2401 rating. Or if this is actually the right Novikov. Maybe it's not the same Novikov. Um, at any rate, though, you know, that's you could see that that game worked out well for Black. But I think uh, there's an interesting novelty here, which is to play knight, get the knight to d5 before he gets e4. And, and what's interesting about this is the knight can relocate and has this idea of coming to b6 and a4. So. I'm recommending this as a possible novelty. Not that I think it's, it's a necessary novelty, but, you know, having novelties is never bad. Um, and one of the ideas here is now, uh, you know, there, if he plays d5, d5 still doesn't seem to be that great. You just take and play knight e7, uh, which reaches sort of the similar position anyway. So what's the difference? The knight is here instead of here. And I think there's some interesting, you know, attributes to that, you know, because the, the knight can come to a4, and sort of support the queen side, you know, from there it can, it will, you can take the bishop for one thing if, if he doesn't move it, um, or it can come back to c5 to d3. Um, if white tries knight g5 to just try to, you know, mate us on h7, then this move knight f5 uh, looks really strong. You know, if we ask the computer what's going on here, uh, we see that it's, like all these positions, it's over minus one, so it not only thinks we're up a pawn, but that we also have a better position. 
Uh, and it recommends this move f4, but after something like knight a4, uh, bishop e5, we can just play h6, and um, you know we thread knight uh, knight to e3 if he moves the knight, so he has to go in for something you know crazy like g4, and yeah, everything just seems to work out pretty well for for black in this position. F6, uh, bishop d4, gf, and um, and it's saying minus one point, you know three. 1.5, you know, it's, it's really liking Black's position after something like Queen d6. Yeah, we have to be careful not to get mated on the h-file, but um, oh, and in fact, maybe we are getting mated on the h-file. So, you know, the computer might be underestimating some of these ideas, so um, so that might be one of the drawbacks to this line, is that well, probably GF is the move, you know, probably, yeah, now the computer's saying, like, G4 is a better... Don't let the, don't let the rook have this counterplay idea. And, um, and yeah, now it's minus 1.4, and well, let's see if it holds steady there for a while. Yeah, it looks like it is. It's saying white has to play something like D6, bishop A7, but um, after this, this powerful exchange sack, it's still saying, you know, black is, is much better here, just because he's got, uh, you know, these pawns are, are, are horrible. Uh, so we got two two pawns. Really, we have more than two pawns worth of compensation here, and that's why it's saying that, that we're so much better. But if white plays more solidly, like rook fe1, now we can play knight e7. And um, on a move like knight e5, you know, we'd like to play knight g6 to challenge this knight. That's one of the main ideas behind this knight e7, but this square is a problem. So knight a4 first, he'll probably move the bishop, and then a move like bishop d7. Uh, one of the reasons, the tactics you have to look out for in this recommendation is that he, he could threaten to play knight takes c4 because this this is hanging. Skype toolbar is always crashing on me. I mean, after something like bishop f4, knight g6, you know, I think black is doing is doing all right here. Um, and the computer, you know, as it thinks a little longer, it's still saying more than minus one, you know. But I think there's certainly nothing wrong with this grandmaster plan of, of or Kostiniak's plan of knight e7 and knight g6 and keeping the knight on f6. Because um, there might be lines that I haven't looked at really deep with this novelty. There might be lines where this leaving the king side, you know, maybe, you know, when we've left, left the defense of the king side, we have to worry about some of these attacking ideas over here but it seems to work out all right you know this relocation to to a4 seems seems strong and um, and in this position you know after something like bishop g5 computer is saying just something like queen c8 and uh, after something like knight g6 hg you know we like it when we win this exchange and um, you know, our knight is actually very well placed on a4, um, so that's my novelty in this line, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting, and, and I've shown off some of the ideas of what uh, of what black is trying to do here. So mainly you just need to remember that, if you just remember in this opening that we generally are always going to play knight c6, a6, rook b8, and b5, and that it's really the bishop that's the flexible piece, and we'd like to develop it, you know, as soon as possible. And and uh, you saw in the first video it went to d6, in the second video it was going to e7, and in this video it's been going to b4 and a3. So that's the takeaway, I guess, from from this line is that you know the bishop be flexible with your dark squared bishop because it often has, you know, where it goes is kind of the key to each variation. Um, other than that, just remember that you know, in the e3 line, you can't play your rook b8 idea because of this move knight fd2, so you do have to play this move bishop d7. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think it's it's pretty easy to remember where the pieces go in this variation, and I think if you've watched all of these first three videos now, you should have a good feel for how black can position his pieces, even though white often does get his center pawns to e4 and d4. Black seems to have rich counterplay, uh, lots of ideas. Um, he does have to, to play, find good defense and moves sometimes on the king side, uh, but when he does, he's rewarded with a nice imbalanced position where he can play for a win against pretty much anybody. So I hope you've enjoyed these first three videos. Um, I'm now going to move on to very important sidelines. Um, this is probably one of the most popular lines is to play knight e5 here with the idea of just taking the c pawn back, and you know, we can't play b5 um, because... 
Uh, bishop takes a8. I didn't need to turn on the computer for that. That's my embarrassing moment in the video. Um, so yeah, we can't play b5 here, and therefore, you know, and we aren't, we haven't been in time to play this knight a5 idea. So uh, you're generally going to have to give this pawn back in these lines, and White's just playing for a simple, you know, positional edge. And there's a ton of theory on c5. I think. I'm not really sure that c5 equalizes. You know, there have been a lot of recent activity in this line. Like, I think there's games where, like, Grisha played white. And um, I, I think that white has a good chances of an edge in this line. And so I'm going to recommend uh, I'm gonna recommend playing bishop b4 check, and we'll get into that in the next video. Um, in addition, uh, there's this idea of when you play d takes c4, if white just plays queen a4 check and just wants to get the pawn back. So these are, these are, these next two lines, 95 and queen a4, where white focuses on he wants to get this pawn back. He doesn't want to play a pawn down. So they have a radically different character from what you've seen in the first three videos. But they're very important lines. And um, and so we have to cover them in some detail. So I'll do that in the next video. And then I, I may make a fifth video where I discuss the neo Catalan and uh, you know move order tricks where white either doesn't play d4 or c4. If he doesn't play either c4 or d4, I don't think I'm going to consider that a Catalan. That's probably likely to be something like a King's Indian attack. You know, in other words, if they just go knight f3, g3, bishop g2, I'm not going to call that a Catalan. But I may make a fifth video where I try to talk about how to take on the neo Catalan. But there's really a ton of theory on the neo Catalan. And um, if, especially if you accept it, you know, again, you've got knight a3, queen a4, all these all these standard moves you have against the Catalan. And I'm not sure it would even fit into into one video, but I'll decide. I'll probably do the, these four main videos and then um, and then decide whether or not to do the fifth. The other issue with the move order video is that uh, you'll play different things depending on if you play the Queen's Gambit declined or the Nimzo. So the nice thing about these first four videos is they're catered to a single, you know, you reach the same position regardless of if you play the QGD or the Nimzo. But in that last video, you know, like right away, if they play one C4 or one Knight F3, you know, like a Knight F3, a QGD player will play D5, but a Nimzo player will probably play Knight F6, you know. So th those are the issues I have to decide if I even want to bother trying to deal with move order tricks. So I may just make this a uh, four video series on the Catalan, or I may expand it and make it a five video series that talks about move order tricks. So, so we'll see. So I hope you guys are enjoying this, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, what's up? This is Casio, and uh, this is going to be my um, fourth and final video in, in Decline the Catalan. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the various sidelines, uh, knight e5 and queen a4 check. Um, calling them sidelines isn't really, you know, they, they aren't really that much of sidelines. They're, they're actually both very common moves. Um, so first I'm going to look at knight e5. So well, what's white's idea with putting his knight here? Um, well, the main idea is that he's anticipating black's b5, and uh, which is now impossible because white would just play bishop takes a8. Um, and in addition, he wants to just take the pawn back for free, essentially. And um, one general rule about this position is that if white gets to play knight e5 takes c4 and black hasn't managed to kind of equalize the, po the positional aspects of the position, then, then white's just got an advantage. So this is kind of the, I'm trying to avoid all the complications lines. Um, White's basically just playing to, to get the pawn back and and then uh, and then uh, have a better position. So there's a whole bunch of theory on this move c5. And uh, White can play knight a3 or bishop e3. And I don't know, I mean, it, basically he gets the c-pawn, but you get to get the d-pawn. Like he lets you play c takes d4. And some of those positions get really hairy. I think that white may actually have an edge there despite what theory says and um, I'm going to recommend something that I think is kind of a simpler solution and that's just to play bishop b4 check. Um, now one of the things we see is that this pawn on d4 would be hanging in case of any inner position here. So like if he plays bishop d2 he doesn't have compensation here like we can just take and um, yeah he's down two pawns so um, he's not going to be able to maintain the bishop here and keep us from castling. I mean, we can always castle long if we need to. We've seen that before. Um, or play c5 here so that we can castle. So he's not going to be able to maintain that. And, and uh, So the overwhelming move that's that's played you know, all the time is, is knight c3. And um, here one thing we have to notice is that there is a threat of queen a4 check. You know, And um, we have to be a little careful about, uh, about this piece here. Although there are some lines... Um, where you actually can get away with playing knight c6, and then when he takes on c6, you take on c3. But those are mainly lines where this bishop has, has taken a piece, so I'll mention that. So uh, knight d5 is played with the idea of basically um, 
stopping that queen a4 check idea so because now the knight on on d3 